Hello everyone, I'm Tom Denford, co-founder and CEO of ID.coms. Welcome to Media Snack Meets, where we get to meet the individuals and organizations doing great work to inspire success and drive change in the global media and marketing industry. Because the best are short on time, I ask just six questions in 15 minutes or less, and we get to learn what's behind their success, how to make change in the industry, and what the rest of us can learn from that experience. My guest for this episode is John Coyne, who's the VP of Brand, Creative, and Media at Intel. Hi, guys. Hello, Hello gentlemen. Where are you? There you are. Yes. Hey, John. Tom, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Really good to see you. Thank you for joining the show. Absolutely. My pleasure. If there was any confusion, you have some good branding in the background, as I was saying. Uh, <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you. I try to be on brand at all times. Yeah. Good. So you know the format. We'll kick straight into it. So the first question, um, just explain to our viewers what you do. You're very well known in the industry and certainly in the U.S., um, but what is it that you do at Intel? And something that, you, that you've done either at Intel or previously in your career, media career that, you, that you're most proud of? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I'm glad to be here, John Coyne. Uh, I've had a long career, mostly in the agency world, at agencies like BBDO and Goodby Silverstein and partners at others. I made the transition to client side about five years ago, a little more than five years ago. At Intel, I'm basically our chief storyteller. So responsible for brand, the creative we put in the world and the media that we uh, 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 place out there as well. I feel like I've got the most fun job uh, at Intel, honestly. And I, I think, I don't know, I've done so many things that were that have been really cool. I think one of the most fun things that I've gotten to do at Intel was we, we uh, are a uh, global, in, uh, Olympic sponsor you know, for the Olympics 2018 for the Winter Games in South Korea. Uh, I had only been at Intel at that point, you know, maybe about you know six or seven months, and we had the opportunity to basically in about six months stand up a global uh, brand campaign on the Olympics uh, and and you know, really kind of putting uh, together a whole uh, Olympic effort that Intel had never done before. And it was just so much fun. We got to go around the world. We got to to create content with amazing athletes in, in you know, Japan and China and the U.S. Uh, we got to do some really amazing media formats, experimenting uh, with virtual reality and, and doing things we had never done before. So it was this wonderful collection of trying new things, wonderful stories with technology at the heart of it, all done in about a third of the time you'd normally want to pull all that together. Exhilarating, but a lot of fun. Good, good. Are you involved in the Olympics? You've got the Winter Olympics coming up now, haven't we, in a few few weeks' time? Yeah, we do. We do yeah. have them come up in Beijing. It's uh it's been a it's been a weird last couple of the Olympics with COVID and and you know some of the challenges there. But yeah, we're uh we're gonna get through these and hopefully one day we'll all be able to be back at Olympic Games where people are in the, you know, attendance and and you know, we're back to what a we all know norm, more normal Olympic landscape looks like. Good, good, excellent. Um, so you've touched on a few things there which might come up in, in this question, but as you say, you've, you've had experience both on the agency and, and on the advertiser side. What's the, what's the best thing that you find, the most rewarding thing that you find about working in media at the moment? Yeah, I, honestly, I have to say it's the fact that every day there are new things to learn. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I think the minute that I feel like I've kind of got it figured out and there's nothing new to take on, I, I'm, you know, it's time to quit and go do something else. And I, I, I just find the media landscape, frankly, has never been more exciting and dynamic than it is today. I started in the business when, you know, we were, uh, uh, you know, delivering, you know, the big innovation was cable TV. I remember when we did a buy for Wrigley's Double Mint Gum uh, back in like the, I won't tell you when, but like the big move was, should we go to cable and off of network? And like, <clears throat> wow, we had so many debates around that. And I look at where we are today. It's so dynamic. Our ability to use data to understand people and to understand uh, 
them so we can create unique brand experience. It gives us whole new ways of reaching them. And teams like mine at Intel, which I love, we get to put media and creative back together again mm -hmm. after decades of having them separated and frankly, not having them interact together that much. You had a creative agency, media agencies, and and they often kind of stayed in their own lane. So I, I love that you know our media and creative agencies are attached at the hip with data being the connective tissue between them. So I, I don't know, I just feel like every day there's something new to learn. And the minute you think you've figured it out, there's a whole new format. And yeah. you know, that, I don't know, that just keeps me going. Keeps yeah. me keeps me young ish. But that's gonna keep you in the business forever then, because that's never it gonna work, is it? It will. What else can you do that is this like literally this dynamic and just changes hour to hour? Good. And when we first met, I was really uh I've really enjoyed, you know, learning your job title because not that many marketers, you know, break out the creative brand and media as a as a responsibility. You know, it's typically more generic, and I think it's a really good signal, as you say, that that's the way the business thinks is is in an integrated way. You don't have these kind of silos in many businesses. You know, you ha you'd have a brand leader, you might have somebody who's responsible for advertising yeah. or creative, yeah. somebody then responsible for media. And I know that you sit across all of those things. Yeah. But I think that I think that's good. I think we need more of that. It's quite helpful. Even though it's, I can't fit it on I, the screen. I think, it's, I think it's the chance to to make sure it's all working together. Uh and, and that it's all kind of all um you, you know it's all planned and orchestrated and you know the brand has to be infused through everything and and we really need the uh, to me the best the, the best creative ideas are ones that have media thinking at the center of them so uh, i just think that it is a uh it's a privilege to be able to have these teams all working together when i first put, put the group together it was not used together with creative was over here we had a team and media was in another group and i remember when we brought them together it was a lot of feeling each other out like really how's this going to work are you going to prioritize creative over media or media over creative. And now, you know, a few years on, it, it is the most tight knit integrated team I've ever worked with. Yeah, that's good. We hear, we hear from others that in that situation that you, you can become, you, you probably start as the referee, don't you, in that game, but then you, then you hopefully you can evolve yourself to become the, the, the conductor of the orchestra. It's probably a nice that's way of right. looking at it. I've heard. That's, and that's where we are now. Yeah, that's good to hear. It really is the orchestra. Good. So that it doesn't come without its challenges, though. So let's just think in media specifically. I know you look across a kind of wide range of mm -hmm. uh, intel activities, but in media, in your role, what, what do you think are the biggest challenges that you see? Well, there's a lot of them, but I, I, I think the one that I'm probably most concerned about right now, and again, it's kind of a challenge and an opportunity, I think it's the challenge of recruiting and keeping talent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a talent challenge. We're heading into our third year of working remotely, and trying to keep people feeling connected to each other and the work. I mean, it's a massive challenge for agencies and clients alike. And I have conversations with our, uh, you know, with our media agency, uh, Dentsu, and you know, so we work with them around the world, and in every country, in every market, in every region, it, it, it's the same conversation. Their talent is, you know, quitting. They're going somewhere else. They've got, you know, more offers. Than ever before, you know, people, uh, are, are, frankly, are, are more free to pick up and go. It's like we've all seen the great resignation. Um, I just think, you know, it, the, the challenge with everybody hiring and as business starts to come back, it's creating such a competitive marketplace where employees really hold the power. And I think the organizations that will do well during this time are the ones with strong cultures. Uh, focused on diversity, equity, leading with purpose, where the priority is really providing people with a path for development and growth, and also a track record of innovation and creativity. I think that's what people are looking for. And it's our job as leaders in the media industry uh, to make sure that our talent is seeing that and that they uh, are, you know, that they're participating in that journey with us and they're feeling fulfilled. I mean, people are not just coming anymore just to do the job. Yeah. They want to come and be a part of something. And I think that's the challenge. So I, I really feel like the biggest challenge we face right now is one of talent. And yeah. it, it is a, uh, it's fueled and, you know, it's been dramatized by COVID, uh, probably a trend that was already there. But I just think that's a consistent 
conversation I keep having with leaders of teams I'm working with. I'm sure other uh, companies and leaders are out there having the exact same problems. Yeah, I mean, it's it's consistent, as we all know. We see that in in many of the larger advertisers that we that we see, and and in their agency relationships, obviously. Yeah. It, marketing plays a role. That's interesting, actually, because I've had a conversation with a few, you know, marketing leaders who. Mm-hmm who their businesses are acknowledging the strength of the brand and the marketing yes. as also being a driver to attract some of the best talent as well. Um, yeah, but I can, uh, I mean, I had two data points on that recently. I was talking to a person at Intel who leads a lot of our college recruiting and she was telling me that the two things that uh, perspective, uh, you know, people particularly coming out of college early in career talent are looking for is they, they want to understand kind of the sustainability commitment of Intel and they want to understand our commitment to diversity and inclusion and equity. And those, the, and they really, really what they're saying is we want to understand the purpose that Intel has a purpose at the center of everything you're doing that is above and beyond kind of the, you know, the kind of the day job. And yeah. that's something that, uh, you know, we weren't seeing, you know, even just a few years ago. So that is, you know, and basically what they're saying is they're, they, they want to, they're, they're looking at the, what we're putting out in the world about the brand. And if they don't see those things represented, like they're, they're looking for a, a brand to go work with that is more aligned to their values. So yeah. I do think that the brand and how we kind of represent it in the world uh, really is a material impact on our ability to recruit and attract talent. And I know it's yeah. the same thing with our agencies because they they also want to know that, hey, if I'm working on the Intel business, what does Intel really care about? Because they also are looking to be aligned with their you know their own personal values. So it's just a huge uh, opportunity for all of us, especially us as kind of, you know, brand and in, in, in media and creative leaders. Good. I think, I mean, at the very least from our, from our media snack viewers, I think, you know, they'll be able to hear in in you, you know, Intel's an interesting place that's taking these things seriously. So you know, any message that you can get out there, I suppose, is helpful. Uh, I always ask all of our guests, because everybody in this industry is always hungry to do better and, you know, to learn. And we talk about leadership advice. And that, what, I, what I'm asking here is any piece of leadership advice that you've learned in your career that actually sticks with you, that is, is meaningful and important, or some leadership advice that you consistently give to others that you that, that you or they think is helpful? This is a uh, advice that I got at a point in my career when I was struggling and, and not doing particularly well. And it is a, it's a discipline that I have worked hard to pass along to my teams. And it, it comes from a simple thought, and that is you can't pour from an empty cup. Uh, if you think about that, that is it's a very visual idea, and, I, and, and the way I, that I resonate with that is early in my career, you know, I was caught up in trying to get recognition, you know, focused on accomplishments. In the process, I, honestly, I felt like I sold myself out. I worked around the clock, you know, six to seven days a week. I didn't prioritize relationships. I didn't take care of myself physically. I stopped working out. I ate garbage. You know, I gained a lot of weight. I didn't have time for hobbies. You know, basically, I was a machine for hire, uh, but I wasn't inspired, and I don't feel like I was inspiring. I was an empty cup. I f- was dry. And I had to make some decisions to take care of myself first so that I could then take care of my team and the people around me. I honestly believe if, you know, if you're healthy, you can help create a team that's healthy as well. So, you know, we work hard with my team to, to make sure people are setting boundaries uh, you know, particularly working in COVID, I've got a number of people on my team that are, you know, have kids at home. They've been, you know, teaching school in the day while they're on mm-hmm. on video conferences and, you know, trying to do work and trying to really make sure that we are leading by uh, making sure that people are, are are taking care of themselves personally. Because I always, I believe a person who's kind of well fed and taken care of and healthy you know, emotionally and, you know, physically and even spiritually, they're able to, uh, you know, that's where the creativity comes from. That's where you're going to find people really coming up with that innovation and breakthrough ideas because they're, you know, their, their cup is full. It's not empty. So I love that idea of you can't pour from an empty cup, but it's all of our jobs individually to think about 
how are we taking care of ourselves as people to you know, make sure we're full and that we, we actually have something to offer other people. I love that. Very good. I love, I love the answers to that we get to these questions because nobody ever says the same thing. There's no kind of cliches. People, these are generally mean, genuinely meaningful things. I think they're very helpful. Yeah, that's um, great. So, you know, I, I get a sense, I'm sure our viewers do, you're, you're pretty zen, John, right, in these things. <laughs> I, I think you've got, you've got a great kind of energy as an inspiring leader. But outside of business, like, so where do you kind of refill that cup? Like where, where do you, you know, get, get your energy from outside of media? Yeah, I don't know if this is where I get Zen or if this is where I, I, I don't know, I get, uh, uh, <laughs> sometimes I get more anxiety, but uh, honestly, my if a lot of what I focus on outside of work is, I, I mean, I do a lot of things. I love exercising. I ride my bike. I love to climb mountains on my bike. I do all those things. But honestly, the thing that really, that I feel the most is I'm a girl dad. Uh, so if you heard, you know, Kobe Bryant talk about it, you know, he's a girl dad. Uh, I'm a girl dad. I've raised two amazing daughters that I'm so proud of. And I learn a lot about life and culture and frankly, even myself by spending time with them. They're in their twenties now and they seem to still enjoy kind of hanging around with me. So I think that's good, but <laughs> watching them find and develop themselves and, and their superpowers, it's so much more important than anything else I've ever done. And I also love now that they feel very free to, you know, give me advice and lots of input for me, uh, which I really appreciate. But that's where I get a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of passion outside of work. I, I just, you know, it's so rewarding to to get to go and do things with them. And they, and they push me. They get me to do things I wouldn't normally, you know, uh, do, which, you know, watching programs I wouldn't normally watch, going to hiking places I wouldn't normally be interested in, you know, talking about, uh, you know, musicians that I hadn't even heard of. And so I, I love that it keeps me inspired and, and learning as well. Back to the, you know, kind of the idea of, of uh, always learning. Good. Well, I'm right with you there. I'm a, I'm father of daughters as well. So uh, well, there you go. a little bit younger. So they're, they're, they're still. <laughs> we, we, we can talk afterwards. I, yeah, um, I think before can, notes. There's a lot yeah. of water under the bridge yeah. <laughs> between those that. teenage years and getting them where they are now in their 20s. Yeah, we're just heading into that. So I need the advice. Um, so just looking ahead, we so we've talked, John, about you know some of the great things in media and things that are just inspiring, give us all energy, and some of the challenges that we're facing collectively as a as a uh, an industry. But you know, give me some hopes for the year ahead. I mean, COVID aside, in twelve months' time, you know what what do you think we can achieve as an industry? And in you know what would you be looking back as being successful for us? Great question. I mean, I, I think you know first I, I do have a, a simple hope and. And that is just that we'll start to be able to be together more regularly. Uh, and, you know, we started to do that at kind of at the end of the year. And and it's just so inspiring because I, I honestly think that actually being able to be together, working together, kind of workshopping things in a room together. It's, you know, it's so old school, but I, I think that's where we're going to get to, you know, new ideas and be able to tackle kind of white space and, you know, really kind of get to that next kind of big step in innovation. I, I don't, I don't think I'm, in, I'm not looking to go back to the office every day. I think those days are gone, but I do want to be able to get people together as teams purposefully mm -hmm. to keep those human connections going. I mean, I miss my team. Uh, and we've added a whole you know number of new people in 2021 that, you know, have never met anyone in person at yeah. Intel or at our agencies. And, you know, I really hope that, you know, we can change that uh, this year. Um, so I, I think if we can do that, I, I feel like when we kind of get to the end of this year, I feel like certainly me and my team and hopefully us as an industry, we, we can drive innovation. We can just do new things. I know for Intel, there's so many, again, globally, there's so many things happening in, in China that we need to learn from, you know, in terms of re, you know, how, how, how people are shopping and buying, engaging with products and, and how they're, you know, they're, buying through, you know, influencers or, you know, key opinion leaders and how to, how we can take some of those learnings and bring them to other parts of the world. And uh, I want to get over there. I want to see, you know, what's happening and what, what people are doing and then, you know, get our teams together to think about how do we workshop and, and leverage some of those things. And, you know, there, there, that's a beauty of having a global role that we, 
you know, we, we get to take innovation from lots of places around the world and think about how do we take it and, and bring it over to other countries. And uh, I'm hoping that at the end of this year that we are, uh, we have a lot of examples to look back on where we've tried new things. Mm. We've succeeded in some, some haven't worked. That's okay. Uh, but we're really reinforcing the fact that we're an innovation culture. And I do think being able to be together will help us do that a, a little bit more effectively. We've done great things. Don't get me wrong. Over these last couple of years, I've been amazed at what's possible. And I think we've built those muscles. Now I think if we can add back on the muscles of actually working together, uh, I, I just feel like that's where, uh, you know, really the acceleration is going to be. So I, I'm optimistic. I mean, I feel like we are, you know, I know it'll be up and down, but I, I feel like we're going to be trending in a good direction if we can get through this next month or so. Good. Oh, give us hope. That's great. I feel uh, very hope. Yeah. Uh, so John Coyne, VP Brand, Creative and Media, Intel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Who would you like to meet on future episodes? Please let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel where you will also find previous guests, including leading media executives from companies like P&G, L'Oreal, Mars, Mastercard, and many more. Plus some of the industry's most provocative thought leaders, such as Belinda Smith, Jerry Dakin, Professor Mark Ritson, Nadine Cart McHugh, and Gary Vaynerchuk. You can also subscribe to get new episodes each week. And if you like this episode and think someone else would, then please do share it. Thanks so much for watching.